Hey, what's up? Mark McKinnon here. And today we are going into best and fourth edition, the meat of the game, which are attributes. So in previous videos, we talked about your session zero how to establish the baseline for your game. Then we went into templates. So you're gonna select your size, your race, and your class. Then we added on your stats, your body, mind, and soul, your foundational aspects. And now you're gonna spend any remaining character points you have on your attributes. These are your powers, your abilities. And this is the section that's gonna take the most amount of time during the character creation, most likely. It's also a great opportunity for you to understand some of the things you might have chosen in your templates. You didn't quite get what this particular thing did that you chose a part of your, your dwarf or maybe part of your alien gray species and you didn't really know what they do this is the section that explains them all so that's chapter 70 or chapter 5 page 75 attributes are described in levels and so we have between levels 1 and 6 in most instances you may be able to go above that for some but typically levels 1 to 6 with 1 being the lowest level and this is kind of your basic ability and then up to 6 which is which is a mastery in many ways in addition to your actual levels there's something called enhancements and limiters which change your levels to, into an effective level and I'm not going to go into great detail right now. I want to cover that a little bit later. But just to give you an idea is if you have a, an attribute like flying and your flying attribute does a certain thing, you might have it at level three. But if you add a limitation to your flying, maybe you need wings and then you need to flap and you need a, you know, a really big spread to do your wings. Well, that's going to be more limiting than just a regular flying. And so because you're limiting you're adding on a limiter and that's going to bump up your effective level by one. So while it's only a level three attribute, it has an effective level of four because you have one limiter. Enhancements are the reverse. Enhancements are things that benefit your attributes. So for example, you might have uh, telepathy and it functions in a certain way given how the attribute descriptions are, but then you want to add on uh, an extra range. So you, your telepathy works a little bit further than what the baseline does. And so that's an enhancement. And when you add on an enhancement onto your baseline attribute, then it's going to function one level lower. So if you have a level three telepathy and you give it one enhancement, you're going to be down to a level two. So we're going to check a little bit more about customizing attributes later, but I did want to mention that that's because it's right in the beginning of it about enhancements and limiters. And when you're reading through this section, which is you know a good number of pages, dozens and dozens of pages about attributes, because this is the heart of the game. Some of the game's uh, attributes have built-in enhancements and limiters that you can choose right now during character creation in chapter five, as opposed to later on, we'll get it into chapter six, which is about customization. So when you're looking at attributes, there's several different things you have to consider. One is how many character points do you have? So in session two, you were given a certain number of character points, let's say 100, and then you spent a certain number on a race template, maybe, or a class template, or maybe both. And then you also add on stats on top of there. So you have to look and say, well, well, how many of those 100 points do I have left? Because that's the amount of points you have to spend on your attributes section. Now, if you want to spend more than that, then you're either going to have to reduce something earlier on, maybe bringing down your mind stat that you don't, well, I don't really need a 10. Maybe I can go down to an eight and that'll free up four extra points that you can spend on attributes. Or rather than reducing something you've done in the past, what you might want to do is later on in another chapter, add on some defects. And these are going to be disadvantages that your character goes through. And that'll give you some bonus points back that you can then spend on the attributes. So on chap page 77, this is the table that outlines every single attribute. And it also includes a handy reference of the page number as well as the cost per level. So the way attributes work, as I mentioned earlier, that they're done in levels. So say level three or level four. Some attributes only cost one point per level where some really powerful ones might be as high as 10 points per level. So you, what you do is you take the level, multiply it by the cost per level, and that'll give you the total number of points you're gonna be spending on that attribute. You also need to keep in mind as well as established during the first video we talked about back in session zero, and that's about benchmarks. So you can't decide, well, you're playing really low level characters, but I'm going to assign level six in this particular attribute because that is outside the benchmark range. If you do want to go outside, you have to get permission, of course, 
by your game master, which is why creating a character in that group that we talked about in the first video is really important. Because if you can create a character, go through these attributes and have other players there to either, you know, to assist you as well as making sure that you shine and that your character is somewhat unique. Because what you don't want to do is, of course, create a game where every single person has healing abilities. Unless, of course, that's the focus. Maybe you're running a medical style game. But typically, if you want to shine as the medic of the game, you don't want want to make sure that uh, everyone else is a medic as well. So collectively deciding where your attributes are going to be uh, is a really great way to do character creation. Each attribute entry has several things. First, it'll have the attribute name, so for abs absorption or maybe alternate form. And then it'll give the cost per level. And it'll also give something called the relevant stat. So you don't need to know a lot about how the game mechanics work, but relevant stats are stats that you're going to be rolling against whenever you want to use that particular attribute. For example, absorption. Absorption is a way to absorb kinetic energy, and what that'll do is that will reduce the number of damage you take. So it's not armor, what you're actually doing is absorbing uh, the, the damage itself. So if you need to make a roll, there's a relevant stat entry here of body. So you're the GM might require you to make a body stat roll in order for the absorption to uh, act in a particular combat setting, for example. So not every attribute has uh, a an irrelevant stat. For example, if you have uh, heightened combat abilities, a combat mastery attribute, then maybe you don't need to, to ever make a stat roll because it's just something that affects your ability overall. So the relevant stat is important for some. And then we give attribute description. And then some of the attributes have limiters and enhancements, as I mentioned earlier. With this list, you're going to want to go through and start making a master list to start with. My advice would be pie in the sky. You know, what are all the cool things you'd want to have? You don't have to come up with the, the levels. Just read through and say, oh, yeah, it'd be really great to be able to uh, maybe see into the future. So I'm going to write down the cognition attribute. And then I want to be really good at uh, shooting someone with a, a bow at a range. So I'm going to write down ranged attack. And maybe you want to be able to teleport as well. Great, you write down teleport. So this is a kind of a shopping list to start with. You may not be able to afford everything, but it's a way to start to give you a framework. Okay, here's the 10 different things I'd like to do. Wow, I really can't afford this many uh, because I spent so many on my race and my class. So you don't have that many points left over. So you take that initial list and then you start looking at it. Well, how can I get that down further and further? So, well, maybe, maybe I don't really need to teleport. It was a neat idea. I can work my character concept around that. And so you start whittling it down further and further until you finally are going to end up getting uh, a number of levels of certain attributes, which will equal a certain number of points. And that will fit into your total scheme because at this point, you're going to have your stats plus your templates plus your the points that you spend on attributes. Another thing that's really important to look at when you're creating these attributes is, well, is it something that can even be used in the setting that you have? Again, working with your game master would be vital. So if you want to choose, oh, I'm going to choose dynamic powers. Uh, so I want to have control over magic, and that's going to be your thing. Well, if magic doesn't exist in your setting, maybe it's a high tech world and magic is not real. So you really can't choose that. And so it's going to be so important to work with your players and the game master to choose the attributes that are appropriate for what you want. This will take time. And there, if there's anything that trips people up in Bessem, it's not a complicated system, but because there's so many options, this can sometimes take a while. It's also important to note that this may be a little bit different from other games you might have played if you're not used to what's called an effects-based system. So some games, uh, let's say Dungeons & Dragons. So you can cast a spell that's Magic Missile, Fireball, Lightning Bolt. Those are three examples of spells that shoot things from the, the caster and do damage when they hit someone. In Bessem, we don't work with those specifics and have three different powers of shooting uh, pain and damage at someone. We have one, one attribute called weapon. And through the selection of the limiters and, and enhancements that come along with the weapon, as well as your description of it, that will define some of the details of it, what it does. So for example, my weapon might be a level two weapon, and I think it's fire-based. So I'm going to say, yeah, so this weapon is going to be, I shoot a fireball from my hand. Someone else chooses a level two weapon, functionally looks the exact same, but they say, oh, I want it to be lightning that I shoot from my hand. So when you're role-playing, the character sheet may say the same thing, 
but the role playing aspects will be different. So someone wants to light fire to a building. Well, the person that has lightning is not going to be able to do that. The person that has fire abilities can do that. And so these are things that go beyond what's in the sheet, which is why it's called effects based. So you look at the effect that you're trying to create and then you fit the attribute to fit that effect. So you're not creating a particular type of damaging spell. You're creating a damaging spell or a damaging ability, and then you're describing the effect that it does. Someone may say, oh, well, I want, I want to create a speedster, someone that's really fast, like a Sonk the Hedgehog, for example, and I'm going to run up and I'm going to hit someone a thousand times in a round, and it's going to do all sorts of damage to them. Well, actually making a thousand different combat rolls in the game is going to be very different, difficult to do. Um, and it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do that. What is the effect that you're trying to describe? Well, ultimately the effect is this particular character who's going to, martial artist is going to punch a thousand times. What am I doing? I'm just doing damage. The fact that it's a thousand times punches is not really relevant. That's the effect. The baseline is it's a weapon that does a certain amount of damage. Maybe you want it to be highly damaging, so you'll choose a level five or six weapon versus a level one or two. Because if you're doing a thousand punches on someone, you want a fairly high level of the weapon that it does. But you don't actually need to make a thousand rolls. You don't need to have a thousand attacks. You're taking the effect that you want, and then you're fitting the attribute to the effect. So it's a little bit different from what's called a power-based system, which is what you choose exactly what you want, and you, you match that up, whether it's your fireball, lightning bolt, magic missile. That's a power-based system. Bessem is your effects-based system. And working with the GMs, you're going to be able to take what you want and create the right system for it. So if you're teleporting off, you know, I want to teleport someone's arm off and do tons of damage. It's like, well, what is the effect? Is it really teleport or is it a weapon uh, that's going to have highly penetrating, for example? Uh, and so that's going to take a lot of time, perhaps, to figure out if you want something highly detailed and highly specific. This section can be very fast if you spent a lot on your attributes through your character race and your character class. They already come with a list of attributes and defects that are included, and they tell you what level they are. So if I'm going to flip back, for example, and I'm going to look at the Nekogen, so your, your cat person. So that comes with level 2 combat technique already here. It comes with level 2 features level one heightened senses, level two mulligan, level two special movement, so you can move like a cat. And then it comes with claws as well, level one claws that function as level two because they do have um, a limiter in it. So this already describes in the template section what are the attributes you have. If you then in the attributes chapter, you're going to be adding on. So you're going to take your maybe your level one heightened sense is hearing. Well, maybe your Nekogen also has a great sense of spell or also has a, a great sense of uh, taste, for example. So you can bump that level one to two or three and you're just paying the difference because when you acquire the Nekogen template, which costs 10 points, you've already got that baseline in there. So your attributes are going to add on to what you've already established in your race and your class templates and your size templates if you're anything other than medium as well. So take some time with this, read through the chapter, chapter five. You're going to really enjoy going through this. And if you have any questions, talk to the other players and talk to the game master about what works in that setting, what works compared to what the other players are doing that maybe give you that, that little bit of, of spotlight that's a little different from everybody else. And then once you're finished with the attributes, you're done your character with one exception, and that's the defects. If you want to get a few more points, and, and who doesn't like more points, you can always assign some defects. We're going to be covering that in the next video. So enjoy your character creation. Thanks for watching.